Tuesday morning, just getting ready to work on upper body overhead presses on deck today. Now, this will be interesting because this is my second time around on the overhead presses in this block and I should be calculating out one week away of progressions from actually uh, matching my previous one rep max on the overhead press, which is encouraging because I've got about seven or eight more weeks of progressions to tackle on the overhead press, which means that I should clear a pretty significant PR on a lift that has been around in my programming for quite a while. So we're gonna get under the bar assuming that I smack this calculation today, it'll be pretty encouraging. Starting off strong with a top end overhead set, 155 pounds for eight consecutive repetitions, moving that calculated one rep max further and further away, which is extremely encouraging. What wasn't so encouraging is how deceptively difficult that initial rep off the chest was. Just about took everything out of me, but I managed to hang on through the entire set until the 8th rep just about sent me to sleep, almost put me back to bed. And if that wasn't bad enough, the back off work certainly was. It did not feel like I lightened the load at all. 139 and a half pounds. I set 4 and 5 of my working sets for this training session. My triceps were tapped, clapped, cooked, dead, decimated, you name it. I was very grateful to move into a pulling exercise variation because I'm not entirely sure I could have followed up those overhead presses with another press and managed to maintain any degree of respectable performance but I would like to point out that you can see my shirt is literally ripping to shreds my sleeves are splitting because of how absolutely massive my upper body is clearly getting that's actually not the case I just am wearing a very old shirt and when I bought the shirt I was much smaller and now I am much bigger and so the shirt is old and falling apart but I don't want to get rid of it just yet it's one of my favorite shirts so maybe we'll have to turn it into a sleeveless and check out this exercise variation name change I used to call it a JM press but I got in trouble from one of my friends because apparently Although similar, it's not really a JM press. A JM press is much more specific with the execution and therefore it would be disrespectful to JM Blakely to call it as much. So I had to come up with a different name and we couldn't find anything that looked like this execution. So now we have the Graham Guillotine extension. Take it or leave it. It's going to be famous one day. Maybe. We'll see. But I do like executing that variation. It absolutely hammers the back of the arms. Thursday morning. 197 and a half pounds on the bar eight repetitions per leg for the walking lunge now this this is progress this makes me feel good for those of you just tuning in who are maybe not as familiar with some of my training preferences lunges top the list of one of my favorite exercises there's just something about stacking the plates up on a barbell walking lunge that just makes me feel like an absolute certified badass. So seeing progress on this variation warms my heart and also absolutely demolishes my glutes, cooks my lower body. Thank you, Blake. You can see him pop in the side there, keeping an eye on me to ensure that I don't get pinned by that weight. But going back to my comment before I so rudely interrupted myself, even with only three working sets on the lunges, my legs are done after this particular training session. One top end set on the trap bar deadlift here using the high handle position, 445 pounds on the bar, definitely running out of space on the bar even for those higher repetition sets, eight consecutive repetitions. It's kind of the theme this week, clearing lots of top end sets of eight. And I felt confident the whole way through these. Definitely felt like I had more in the tank, which is encouraging to say the least. Although a little bit frustrating because it also means that I'm likely coming close to having to get a new trap bar. And look at me just fooling around, looking like a fool as well, trying to figure out how to do a hand clean. Sad. Some serious volume Saturday morning on the bench, 197 pounds for six sets by eight repetitions. Kind of like last time I was under the bar, felt like a bodybuilder just a little bit. This brought back memories to when I used to do sets of eight to 12 or 10 to 15 on the bench week in and week out before I became interested in getting stronger as primary. It's a good feeling though to get some significant volume in under the bar 
on the bench press in particular. Some wide grip rows, definitely losing my grip on these high volume sets with a pretty reasonable weight considering the rep range being 15 to 20 repetitions. Some lap press downs here. These are far from challenging right now, but I'm enjoying having an easy exercise variation in because no exercise remains easy forever as you continue to progress forward with the load increases over time. And then we got a top end set. The theme is eights, close grip, easy bar, lying tricep extensions. We got the LTE for those of you who know me best, you know this is one of my favorite triceps accessory exercises. 122 and a half pounds for a top instead of eight. We are going to get those 245s on there one day in the near future. I just know it. Backed it off to 110 pounds and cleared three sets of eight, respectively. And those back offsets were super smooth. I felt encouraged. As soon as the LTEs were done, we went into an easy bar curl. Strict form, 85 pounds on the bar, nothing too crazy. Two sets of five repetitions. Because I'm actually curious, if I focus on it a little bit, how strong I can get my barbell curl variations. We'll have to see, considering I never really have prioritized them before. Sunday morning, uh, 5.30, just finished off a little bit of admin work, emails, etc. Getting ready to, boom, let there be light, do some deadlifts because that's lower too. Now, we're working volume deadlifts right now, so I won't be going super heavy, but I'll be clearing a little bit more volume than usual. So I'll be running a top end set of 392 for eight, and then I'm going to back it off for two sets of six. Normally, I would back it off for sets of eight, but I want to make sure that I'm hitting a volume progression, and it's unreasonable to do it with just two sets of eight. And if I have three sets of eight, then the volume increase is going to be much too great. So I'll be doing two sets of six because then the volume progression becomes much more manageable. We call that math. And math is exactly what we did in advance, and it worked out exactly how we planned in execution. 392 pounds on the bar, a smooth top end set of eight repetitions. Watching this back, it's quite evident to me, quite apparent that I need to focus on wedging more effectively. I'm not really drawing my armpits over the bar as would be further optimal. So something I'm definitely going to have to work on. Regardless, I pulled this top end set of eight and felt great and then transitioned into those two back off sets of six repetitions with 276 pounds. And what's interesting is even though they were not heavy by any stretch of the imagination, it's quite evident that the supporting musculature for the deadlift is not used to this type of volume because my posterior chain was fatigued simply based off of the increased volume. I do find this incredibly curious, how the body responds to these reasonable increases in stress that are often overlooked and undervalued in the planning process of a well-structured training regimen. Some heavier step-ups, five sets of five, with 125 pounds SSB to the 18 inch box, and then finished off with some glute ham raises a great accessory exercise through the posterior chain, 10 pounds held at chest level here for five sets of six repetitions.